What's up you guys, Shardimus Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the Guardians of the Galaxy, Mantis Build-A-Figure Waves Death's Head 2. If you're trying to pick up your Guardians of the Galaxy Marvel Legends figures, you can get them at Bruce. Big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. So I gotta say, this is the largest figure I've seen in a regular Marvel Legends packaging. This is pretty hefty, man. Uh, anyway, on the side, you get Death's Head 2 right over there, and then on the back, you can see a product shot. There's a read-up over here. If you want to read it, pause it now. There's the other figures from the way. Then we get Death's Head 2 on the side once more, and then there's a Guardian's logo at the top, and not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Death's Head 2 out of the packaging. And I think this is a very good figure. I do like this Death's Head 2 figure. It definitely could have been the Build-A-Figure from the Wave. For those of you who don't know or don't remember seeing my interview with Hasbro over at New York Toy Fair earlier this year, I had asked them uh, the fundamental question that all of us were already thinking why wasn't this the Build-A-Figure? Why are you using little old Mantis as the Build-A-Figure? And the reasoning for that is that this sculpted body right here was originally tooled not as a Build-A-Figure, so they needed to tool a newer figure as a Build-A-Figure, and that's why they went with Mantis. And they do cost out their figures per by wave, so this figure is included as part of the wave. So this is really supposed to be the Build-A-Figure uh, in their mind's eye. Whether you want to accept that or not, that's up to you. That's their explanation. I'm just the messenger, but anyway the figure itself is good. I really do like it a lot We get some very fancy paint apps over here. Uh, he does have an interchangeable left hand I wish he had some interchangeable right hand pieces right here. That would have been more appropriate But anyway, let's get a closer look at death's head 2 So before getting into the details of this head sculpt just to briefly talk about death's head and death's head 2 The original death's head is actually a mercenary cyborg as well as this one right over here uh, But the original death's head was created in the Transformers comics and then later on, this Death's Head was actually created in the future by Doctor of AIM, and his mission is to go absorb as many minds as possible, so he has over 106 different minds in one with this cyborg mercenary. And then eventually he goes into the past, which is actually more or less our present, and that's where he actually absorbs the mind of Death's Head 1. So he was previously Minion, and then after absorbing the mind of Death's Head 1, he becomes Death's Head 2. And he does have kind of a spawn personality uh, as from what I had read in the comics he kind of has a Deadpool slash Lobo kind of vibe to him uh, and I think he's a fairly interesting character if you want him in your displays he does team up with the Avengers and the X-Men and he does fight the X-Men at one point so you can set him up appropriately in your displays there's options over here with this guy now going on to this head sculpt I absolutely love it I think Hasbro did a killer job with this thing I think it looks fantastic I'm very very pleased with with it. I really like the teeth and this face just looks amazing to me. I love the pink and the darker red right there. I mean we get some very nice details right over here. I think they did a really good job with this. That looks awesome. I love the red around his eye. I love the gold plastic that we're getting right here. Very much like the next Nihilo figure. You can see how the paint is in the plastic so the gold looks really good. Nice blue deco for his right eye. Even the nostrils look really good over here. I like how the horns look. You can see some marbling in that plastic, but I just think that adds texture to it. I think it looks really nice. I like how the top of his head looks. We have this tealish metallic color right over there at the very top. I'm really digging this a lot. Great head sculpt. I very much dig it. And I really like how the dreads look right over here, or the cybernetic dreads look on this guy. Very nice dark burgundy color with a metallic hue to it. So that's very cool. I'm liking that a lot. Some nice paint detail in there as well, so it's not just one solid color. And throughout we have this nice metallic blue over the flat blue. It could be a little bit more consistent, but I like that it's there. Uh, looking at the left arm right here, you know, this is a Colossus arm. Looks really good. We get some of that teal blue mixed in with the silver. So I'm a big fan of that. And we have some nice black mixed in there as well. That looks really good to me. I'm very pleased with that. 
And then even looking inside right over there, it looks really good. Some nice gold right over here. Fist looks all right. Now he does have an interchangeable left hand, which I don't really understand why he needs to have a pointing finger on the left side. Now the right cybernetic arm is supposed to be able to change, but yeah, so there's the pointing finger. Uh, I just don't totally get the relevance of this. If you know about it, let me know, but yeah, that's just kind of odd to me. This, I know for sure, is supposed to be able to transmutate or change into claws or whatever. And this is where he sucks the mind uh, you know, so that he absorbs the mind into his own, uh, of his next victim and everything, but I really love how this paint came out. That looks awesome. We get some nice bright silver, we get more of that teal silver and the flat silver right here. I just think that looks fantastic. But I wish they had figured out a way to, you know, remove this at the bicep and interchange it with a different, uh, version, so he either has a claw or different weapons and stuff, because it is supposed to be able to change at his will. But it does look really nice, but that's really my biggest gripe with the figure is that you can't interchange this with anything else. If it had been a true Build-A-Figure, I'm sure they would have figured out a way to include different interchangeable parts like they had done with Warlock and Absorbing Man and the Sandman, you know? So that's, I guess, kind of a bummer for the entire wave, right? That this guy didn't end up being the true Build-A-Figure. Uh, but we get some more of that nice metallic blue throughout. And you can see where the metallic blue paint over the blue kind of disappears, like right here on these top abs. We don't get that silvery blue or that metallic blue, it's just flat right there. Same thing right there on the side. So I wish this was a little bit more thorough. You can see there's just a little drop, drop right there, and that's it. And I have seen images where this kind of, uh, you know, this red uh, tubage kind of runs up this way. So we're not seeing that, but I guess there's other artists' interpretations where it looks just like this. But I do like how it looks a little bit better seeing the red right in here. Then there's a little crotch piece, nicely sculpted. Got Dust Head two butt cheeks right there, and not much more on the back. You can see that we do get that metallic blue added. It's just not thoroughly applied on the back right there, but some of it is on the back, so it's not totally bare. Uh, but the butt is, yep. Uh, not the back of the thighs though, it looks, oh no, 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 the thighs are, yeah, they, they don't have it, but on the front it, it does, so, yeah, so definitely more of the front of the figure has that metallic blue, which I gotta say looks really good. Then this right leg looks really good, you can see all these nice little spikes added right over here. Looks pretty nice. I do have a problem with the left leg though. You can see uh, just from, I guess, the way it was packed, uh, we get serious paint chippage right over there. So that does bother me some, but luckily it's on the back of the figure. And I feel like these little spikes right here are pliable enough where they won't break if you drop it, but definitely stiff material so it's not too wobbly or anything. Then we get the feet right over there. Not looking too bad. And he does have peg holes at the bottom of each foot. Now Hasbro's reused the Colossus body mold, so you should be fairly familiar with the articulation on this guy. Now he does have all this hair back here and he can still move his head upward which I am fairly impressed with. I think Hasbro's actually really stepped it up as far as being able to articulate this upward movement with figures or characters that have hair right there. So that's pretty sweet. It's not a whole ton of upward movement but it is some. Anyway the head can move down very far. You get side to side movement right here and a little bit of head pivot. He has shoulders that move outward that much. They move down. You can rotate 360. You get a bicep swivel. Single jointed elbow and the wrist moves side to side, hinges up and down. Same thing with this wrist right over here. On this side you get the bicep swivel, you get the single jointed elbow that bends in that much and then no rotation or anything right here. Again, I wish, maybe it's this piece right here that I wish that they could interchange with other type hands and everything like that. Anyway, you get the ab crunch that bends forward this much and it bends back that much and you also get a waist swivel, you get hip joints that move outward this far and then you can get him to kick forward that much and back only a tiny bit. He has an upper thigh cut, double joint knees and I do want to be careful with these little fins right here that are on the side or the spikes anyway. And then he does have a mid calf rotation right there and then you get the ankles that move down. They don't move up unfortunately and he does have ankle pivot. And I ask for the ankles to move up because it does help with posing. Now to measure out this Death's Head 2 figure you can see that he's standing just under 8 inches tall. Definitely could have been a build a figure. And then for your size comparison we have a recently released Colossus figure from the Warlock wave next to Death's Head 2. And you can see that they do share a lot of the same parts over here. One thing I really appreciate about this Death's Head 2 figure is how well the head rests on the neck over here. That looks much better than it does on this Colossus. And then for a somewhat random comparison, we have Death's Head 2 next to the Toy Biz Destroyer figure. And I'm just showing this comparison here because I really think Hasbro should use this body mold for a new Destroyer, right? That's what I assume they're going to do if they will make a new Destroyer figure. It'd probably be based on this. And it would be even taller than the Toy Biz one too. And then for your Death's Head comparison, we 
have Death's Head 1 compared to Death's Head 2. This is the Marvel Universe 3 3 quarter inch version. Very good figure. If you wanted to pick this up, I highly recommend it. Uh, my biggest complaint with it is that it does not have ankle pivot, but still, this Death's Head figure is very cool. I almost would have preferred to have a Death's Head 1 figure for my Marvel Legends rather than the Death's Head 2, just so I could have a 6 inch scale Death's Head with my Transformers. Then, of course, I have to compare Death's Head 2 to a Transformer, and here he is next to Masterpiece Prime. I don't know if Death's Head 2 actually interacted with any Transformers. I know for sure Death's Head 1 did, and Death's Head 1 did look fairly reasonable in scale like this with Rodimus Prime, and I gotta say, my favorite automobile out there is the Lamborghini, and it did hurt me to see Hot Rod in Transformers the last night as a Lamborghini, yes. That did hurt. Uh, check out that movie review if you haven't already. And then here's Death's Head 2 next to the other figures from this wave that I've already reviewed. And I'm not including this little Groot right here because it just won't stand. I just can't get this little guy to stand. And then here's Death's Head 2 next to the Marvel Legends Big Time No Let Down Spider-Man. Just That's how I assume uh, this blaster over here on his right hand works. I do like this figure. I gotta say it's not a bad figure. I do have gripes. I actually really wish it was the Build-A-Figure. If it was the Build-A-Figure from the Wave, I'm sure they would have figured out a way to incorporate different pieces for the right side or for the right arm anyway. That is my biggest gripe with this piece. I also wish we had more of the metallic blue throughout. I mean, you can see some serious scappage from the metallic blue right there in the midsection, so that bothers me a bit. But otherwise, I do think it's very cool, and I am impressed with the head sculpt, and I do like the figure. And I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, please hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the figure. Let me know what you think of the review. If you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button for more Shardmas Prime videos coming your way. If you're already subscribed and you haven't hit that notification bell, what's wrong with you? You gotta hit that notification bell or else you won't know immediately when the next Shardmas Prime video is posted. I also gotta plug my new tune called Playing With Toys. If you wanna check out Shardfest, I have a link below if you wanna pick up that song and you wanna support. Also, I gotta give a big thanks to all these amazing people for supporting this YouTube channel. Uh, those that support the YouTube channel can hear the Playing With Toys song for free up on the Team Shardimus site, which I'll have a link in the description below for. If you want to see a photo gallery of images, link below at MarvelousNews.com, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said, we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face.